Joanna Simpson here at Quant Minds International in Barcelona. Joining me now is Julien Guillon, Professor at École des Pommes Paris Tech. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Joanna. And just tell me a little bit about how you're finding the conference so far. Very good, you know, like uh, as every year, like Quant Minds is one of the big events in quant finance. And uh, as always, you pick like uh, the right place for the conference. Barcelona and this hotel is great. And we are having like a lot of discussions uh, following great talks. So very happy to be here. Could you tell me a little bit about your work in the four factor path dependent volatility model? And what are the key points that characterizes your work? Yeah, so the initial question at the very beginning of this work is the following. Is volatility path dependent? So that means, so volatility can be implied volatility or future realized volatility, like the volatility of financial markets. And the question is, does it depend on the past prices of the underlying, in particular the past returns and the recent past returns? And if so, how does it depend on those past returns? And so that's a very, um, let's say, empirical approach that I took, uh, where you just look at the data and you want to explain as much uh, of the volatility as you can purely by looking at the prices of uh, the underlying. So for instance, explain the VIX, which is the volatility index of the S&P, purely by the past prices of the S&P index uh, itself. And uh, it's a joint work with uh, Jordan Lecofac, who used to be my intern at Bloomberg and is now a PhD candidate at Berkeley. And we have indeed shown that volatility is mostly path dependent, not purely path dependent, but you can explain a lot of the variability in volatility just by looking at how it depends on the past prices uh, of the underlying. Uh, so that's the, the, yeah, the main uh, takeaway. And uh, why is the talk entitled the, the four factor path dependent volatility model? Is because when you go to the continuous time limit of this empirical study, you can build a model in continuous time that can then later be used for, let's say, pricing and hedging and risk management, for instance. Uh, and uh, there's a nice way to make it Markovian. That just means that you make it handy for practitioners that you can easily simulate it and do computations. And, and it has four factors because that's the minimum of factors that you need. And, uh, and that's why it's called the four factor uh, path dependent volatility model. And what are some of the challenges and surprises that you've encountered in your recent work? So let's say the main challenge was really actually to, to build the model, to build a path dependent volatility model that explains well the data, the volatility. So we, we tried a lot of features to summarize the whole history of past prices. We tried many functions from those features to the volatility uh, using you know, classical machine learning techniques like LSTMs or neural networks. Uh, and in the end, actually, and that's maybe the first of the three surprises that I will mention, eventually we ended up in a very simple model that's just a linear model that depends on two simple quantities that are an average of past prices and an average of, sorry, of past returns and an average of past returns squared. And uh, just an affine function of those actually uh, is explained extre extremely well the variability and the volatility that we observe in the market. So that was actually like a, a, a big surprise to me that something as simple as that could do the job. The second surprise was we then realized actually that some similar models had been proposed in the literature, like with slight variations. And actually our model like um, overperforms these other models like, cons like consistently across equity indexes, also both for implied volatility and historical volatility, and also when we vary the training set and, and, and test set. So it's very robust. And I said the last surprise that we got is that when you actually go to the continuous time limit, this model that, I'm, that, I, that we've discussed just before, uh, and you try to find models that you can input in the model to jointly calibrate to the S&P smile and the VIX smile. So that's really, um, that's, that's purely forward looking. It's not like the parameters, the historical parameters that we have inferred from the, from the uh, empirical study, but it's more like risk neutral parameters that you put in a model to calibrate to option prices. We were actually, actually able to jointly calibrate to the S&P smiles and the VIX smile with this model, which was not guaranteed a priori because you know, it, it was, the model was built purely from the data, it's an empirical point of view, like and 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 just looking at past prices. But actually, it can be used uh, to calibrate uh, options 
uh, very precisely, and, and, and in particular those S&P options and VIX options, which are known to be extremely difficult to jointly calibrate. Julien Guillon, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.